Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, healing from these relationships, and making sense of them. So what happened when you set boundaries with a narcissistic person? Because one thing that happens a lot is when people set boundaries with a narcissist, the narcissistic person turns around and calls you the narcissist. The whole issue of setting boundaries in a narcissistic relationship is a very fraught issue. Boundaries seem to be viewed as sort of the Swiss army knife of relationship repair tools with people believing that everything is better or can be fixed with boundaries. I'm not anti-boundaries. I think they're great, but they simply do not work in toxic or narcissistic relationships. I was recently chatting with someone who was struggling with being called narcissistic in his relationship. He was trying to make a long-term marriage work but was also tired of feeling as though he was always being taken advantage of. This idea of disengaging was working a little bit, but it was exhausting to have every single aspect of him invalidated and to just sit there and take all of this invalidation and verbal abuse from his spouse. So he decided to set some boundaries. He expressed a few needs. He made some preferences known nothing fancy. And he was also very clear on what he would and would not do. His spouse turned around and called him selfish and narcissistic. His asks were not that big. He was asking for some time to do some things he needed to do that they needed done for the household. He asked her to take on a few things that would then kind of approximate, not even close, but kind of approximate some equivalents in the household. He asked her to finally show up to a dinner with his elderly and infirm mother, who was actually a nice person. She wasn't narcissistic, but she couldn't hear very well. They weren't particularly interesting dinners, but this was also a woman who was her spouse's mother and who also gave them some financial support years back so they could purchase their first home. And this guy's wife had not shown up to about the past 10 to 12 dinners with this mother. He was immensely frustrated. Everyone, the books, the Instagram, the therapist, set boundaries. And he felt that what he did wasn't even setting a boundary. It was merely asking for some very basic things that were on his mind. If he was really setting a boundary, he might have done something like, asked her to stop spending excessively from a joint account on frivolous items for the house they didn't discuss, or to stop using disparaging language with him, or to stop talking with their friends about a health issue he had and that he had asked her to not talk about it. That would be setting a boundary. This whole just set a boundary conversation for people in narcissistic relationships needs to stop. It once again puts the onus on the person enduring the relationship and in essence, asking them to go on a guaranteed to fail mission. But then you toss this part on top of it because guess what she said to him when he, he made those asks? She told him he was a narcissist. So if you do set attempt, attempt to set a boundary, they're going to tell you that you're the selfish one, you're demanding, you're the narcissist. And for a lot of people going through these relationships, that can feel like a setback. Many people in narcissistic relationships doubt themselves. They question themselves. They blame themselves. So it's plausible to a person in a narcissistic relationship that they are indeed themselves narcissistic if they attempt to do something like mm, make a need known or set a small boundary. These relationships are about the slow fading of you, the negation of you. It only works if you fully sacrifice your sense of self and your needs to the relationship. You can see how this can be particularly pernicious if this is a parent-child dynamic. The child doesn't have the option of boundaries and over time, they get the message that, hey kid, you exist for the parent, but not for yourself. Not exactly ripe ground for a child to learn how to set boundaries. So even years later, if that's how you grow up and you attempt to set boundaries with that very parent like this, you're gonna to be told that you're selfish 
or bad or entitled or whatever way they try to hit you to keep you subjugated, to keep you silenced. But if a relationship in adulthood is your first time at the narcissism rodeo, you may think that you are merely dealing with selfishness with a touch of manipulativeness. Narcissism happens to you slowly. You are still in the afterglow of the love bomb or feeling like you are in something special and the awful behavior slowly creeps in the back door. So the day you attempt to do what the books tell you to do, all the books about relationships, and you set a boundary, you're going to be hit with the unpleasant and inaccurate idea that you're the narcissistic one, you're the problem, you're the needy one, you're the one who's difficult. When you exert your true self in a narcissistic relationship, when you attempt to create any kind of balance in it, they will find a way to shut that down. And shaming you is a surefire way to do that. You can go ahead and set those boundaries if you wish, but be prepared to be told that you are the one with the problem. Your strongest stance may be just say, okay, sure, if that's how you see me, I can't change that. And I still expect you to stop talking to me that way. You know you aren't those things they are telling you. You've got to keep reminding yourself that. But for them to do that, it's a power move for them. Take that power back. Setting boundaries, not possible in these relationships, but when you do put your foot in there and may clap back with the idea that you're narcissistic, take a minute, recognize this is a common play for them, and don't listen. Thanks again.